go. All righty. Back with, uh, here we are, back with Adam Rosenbach. Eh? Mr. Rules on. Yeah. Rules of butch. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming back. Pleasure. Yeah. We, I, 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 um, I don't know if Rosie actually believes us that we've moved up in the world yeah, off, that's off right. the couch but um, <laughs> we're back on the couch and Rosie's probably like yeah well, you, you blokes are just no bullshitting me out no no <laughs> yeah. it's so weird facing in the same direction and not looking at anything yeah. like, we're, not, we're not watching telly we're not doing anything we're just yeah. Yeah. three fellas just hanging out <laughs> yeah. talking to each other yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah Rosie so mate comedy festival yeah, so uh, Melbourne International Comedy Festival is on at the moment, and uh, it's it's a fun time of year. Like I, I love it. Melbourne's weather's been great, mm. and um, Easter it kicked off at Easter, and it's always weird. Um, you want shitty weather because if it's yeah. if it's good, people go away. Yeah. yeah. So you want not like terrible weather, but you want it so people don't think, oh, let's get out of town. But you want it to be in town, and then think, oh, let's go out. Yeah. You don't and want then, you don't want two hundred k winds and, and hailstones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want them <laughs> don't staying want in. Down. Yeah. 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 You don't want bush right. fires all over the place. No, like, no. Yeah, now now for the seventeenth hour. Adam <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you just want them to um, you want them to not leave the town. So uh, it was a bit it was a bit quiet in the opening weekend, which which can tend to happen just because mm. you know it's Easter. People get away, and you know, fair enough. I'd mm. want to go away if I wasn't doing comedy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. Uh, is Melbourne's Comedy Festival, because I, I agree, it's a great time of year. It's my favourite time of year. I love the Comedy Festival. How it's, many shows have you seen? Uh, three. Oh, great. Yeah. I went opening night. Yeah, cool. You know, I go every year. Like I'm going Saturday night. Um, I'm going to go see Husey's show over over the next week. Yep. I'll go to 10 shows. Yeah, okay. That's great. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. Me, my, my housemate, Jane, uh, she was she was living with me in that room there till we got um, we got robbed. That's a whole other story. Okay. In, inside job, they reckon it was. Yeah, Classic. right. Oregon's Tommy. From you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Put my um, hand up there. <laughs> but no, we went to some great shows, and that's who I'm going on Saturday with. Um, my mate, Jana, we, we just go and we try and see somebody that we know, somebody that we don't know. Yeah, great. You know? That's a really good way to do it. Yeah. Because, I, yeah, I, like I was re- a fanatic before I started doing stand-up. I used to go every year and look, just get so excited for it because it's just such a fun time mm. of year. Yeah. It's great. And it's such cheap entertainment. Yeah, you know what I mean. For where what can it you, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where can you go and spend an hour, hour and a half? Like Stephen K. Amos, uh, Amos. We went and saw Stephen K. Amos and um, Alex Williamson on. Um, fuck, oh, Alex Williamson makes me laugh, man. Yeah, he's a. Funny I haven't dude. seen a lot of his stuff. He's a funny dude, but and so is Stephen K. Amos. He was great. Stephen K. Amos was our show, and it went for like an hour thirty. There was no one in between. And he's like, I'm just going to go. Are you guys happy to sit here? We're like, Pff. so, and that was like thirty dollars. Yeah, that's pretty good, Jeez, isn't it? That's great. It's just great. Yeah, it's that great is value. Good. I just, I just, I, yeah, I really love it. So, mm. well, there's not many other shows where it's going really well, like a movie, and they go, you know what? We're having fun. Let's <laughs> yeah. just chuck in. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. You guys hour. want a sequel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This Star Wars is going pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Let's just add to it. Yeah, we'll yeah. make nine more of them. Thanks, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, How did he get robbed in a secure apartment? Uh, well, <laughs> so what happened was, so I was in Vietnam, and um, and Jane was living in that room there. Um, Davey who's in this room here still he's Jane's mate he's a stand up dude he's a legend I was away so there was a guy in my room there that had been staying with us for a while and there was a new chick that moved in there because I Airbnb the room's out okay and then um, Jane called me she's like hey I got some bad news the house has been robbed I'm like fuck and what's going on she, she said well my room's the only room that got robbed and so Jane was away so when it happened that room was somebody in there, that room was somebody in there, that room was somebody in there. Jane was away. Jane was the only person with any valuables in her room as well. Yep. So she got a MacBook stolen, um, an iMac stolen. So a MacBook Pro, yeah. uh, effectively. Uh, an iMac, a fucking massive, like yeah. 3,000, 4,000 dollars. And then a bunch of jewelry, a bunch of dresses and stuff. Dresses? Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Weird uh, taste. See, yeah. see Tommy sweating? See Tommy sweating? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm spitting a little bit. <laughs> but, um, so... Oh, well, nice dresses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so... She wouldn't but, let me wear them, so I just took them. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so the funny thing was, um, when it was supposed to have gone down, there was... Um, it was supposed to... Have, it had to have gone down between the hours of like 12 and 9 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. Okay. And during that time, everybody was in the house, in their own rooms. So the police came around, they interviewed everyone. They're like, where were you, where were you, where were you? And they're like, oh, I was here. Like everyone, at the time, it, it made sense because Ross used to work from his computer and he would sit in his room a lot. Mm. Davey, Davey has a massive room in there and a, and a balcony to himself, so he cruises in there a lot. Yep. And the girl who'd moved in, this really petite, really um, quiet, shy, 18-year-old girl from the Northern Territory, she just sat in her room and talked to her boyfriend and this and that. So... 
So there was this period. I was in Vietnam, and Jane's laid down all the all the facts on me. And so I was in the hostel at the time, and I'm I'm sitting with everyone. I'm like, right, guys, have a fucking listen to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're basically playing Cluedo. Like, yeah, really, this you know, is great. Yeah, this yeah. with the candlestick. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I was on the phone to Jane every day for like an hour doing these, and we were actually having a great time. We were laughing heads off, having a classic. But the thing was, so Ross was in my room. So Ross was in my Ross is about 55 years old computer programmer. Yeah, and. A lovely guy, mm. genuinely lovely guy. A little bit kooky and socially awkward. Um, Computer guy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Read about yeah, it. Out of the yeah. box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> so, so, Ross, what happened was the police interviewed Ross and everyone said they're in the house. We found out about two days later that Ross had lied to the police. He actually went to the market that day. And so, Ross became, you know... Suspect number Suspect one. Suspect number one. Number no, one. You, he's lying to the cops. Yeah, yeah you can't. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He had the candlestick for the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's right. So He's wiped the CCTV. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. 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 But what happened he's was... He's never like, listened to the show, by the way, as well. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But Ross is such a socially awkward dude that he, he might have just been like, oh, yeah, I was in my room the whole time. Yeah, okay. Uh, I feel like that's Panicked. probably what happened there. Yep. And when I got back, I said to Ross, I said, Ross, I asked him about what had happened because we, we hadn't figured it out. Mm. And I said, what's your theory? And I thing? And I said to him, why did you fucking lie to the police? Yeah. Like, you became, yeah. you became the, the only suspect. Yeah. He goes, oh, I don't know. And he showed me his bank balance. He had like 300,000 bucks. I'm like, so. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he'd been stealing computers yeah, for, for right, years, yeah. obviously. Fucking but, hell. But, um, he had IMAX in his was bank balance. Was it a high savings account? <laughs> yeah. Because you don't want to just run that in your day-to-day. <laughs> no, that, exactly. Smart access. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but the funny thing was, and this is fucked, so, and, and, and there's going to be heaps of people that listen to the show that know this person <laughs> I'm about to reference. So Jane's friend was the one who came around on this. This is where it gets really fucking messy and, and interesting. So <clears throat> it's supposed to have gone down on the Sunday night, right? So on the, Jane was away till Tuesday. On the Sunday night, on the Sunday afternoon, Jane's friend calls her up and says, we're going to call her Dave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, Jane's friend calls her up. She says, um, shouldn't use Dave. It's going to put me off. But, yeah. but, um, she called up and said, can I stay tonight? She's like, yeah, yeah, no worries. There's no one home though, so you'll have to knock on the door. Uh, sorry, there's um, there's no key out for you, sorry. And yep. people are home, so you have to knock on the door. She's like, yeah, right, no worries. She comes around. The story is she's seen Jane's doors wide open, yep. and she just walks in Jane's door, sleeps. The bedroom's messy. The computer's not there, but she thought she might have moved it to her mum's because right. she stays at her mum's a bit, all this stuff. It all makes sense, no worries. And, that's, and it's a friend. So hang on, how did she get in? <clears throat> did she come in through the front door? No, so our balcony there... That has ec- entry to this lounge room and entry to Jane's bedroom. The right, one so stolen. she's come up from the street. From the street. On the yeah. balcony. Yeah, onto the balcony. Like so normal people do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all good. Like, it's all- the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we all come up over the balcony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 All dressed in black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, but, so that kind of made sense and the story checked out and then, so Jane about, Jane tells me all this. I said, yeah. She goes, it was really weird that Kate didn't notice it and tell me straight away, but... On, do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah. Oh, I'm just speaking. How's the dog? Yeah, Ziggy's. Um, my dog's just um, been desexed and he's just crying in the other room. So, mate, they're not. He can cry all he wants. They're not coming back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're not putting. They're not reattaching him, buddy. Yeah, Dad, I want my balls. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, so that that all checked out. But then two days later, Jane calls me up. I'm still in Vietnam at this point, yeah. and she goes, "Right, something really weird has happened, and I want to. I want to get your ideas on it." She goes, so, you know, find my iPhone. I said, yeah. She goes, well, they have the same thing with a computer. It's called find my device. Yeah. I said, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, have you have you done it? Like, here we go. Yeah, here we go. This is great. And she goes, she goes, yeah. So I turn on find my device, and it says. So remember, it's supposed to have gone down on the Sunday because that's when Kate arrived. Yep. Oh shit. <laughs> Dave, you mean? <laughs> Dave. Yeah. That's when Dave arrived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway so. So what happened was, so um, Jane looks at the Find My device, yep. and because a Find My iPhone can only go off the 3G, can only use the 3G, that's so it always picks up the 3G. Okay. To do Find My device, you have to be actually logged onto Wi-Fi. Yep. You know what I mean? Otherwise, yeah, it's just yeah. a bunch of nuts and bolts sitting there yep, dormant. Yep. So with a Find My device, it was seen to be logged on last in this building at <laughs> 8 a.m. on the Monday morning. Right before Jane's mate Dave left the apartment. So what you're saying is she was the last to use it. Well, 
Is that what we're picking up here? Well, but so Dave she, was a lesbian, but essentially. She, <laughs> but but it was supposed to have. It was supposed to have not been there. It was supposed to have happened Sunday. It was supposed to have not been there. Oh when, right. Yeah, that was the, the story. Was when when she arrived. It wasn't in the room. The room was really messy. It looked like something had gone down, but she didn't bring any notice to it because she thought Jane might have just left in a rush. Yep. And then two days later, we find out that it was logged on the morning. The last time it was it was on was the morning of, of the, uh, the, the the departing of, of Jane's great friend. Right. Okay, so to, just to really throw you under the bus here, mate, yeah. what do you think happened? I said to, I said to Jane I was in Vietnam I said to Jane so she's she's told me exactly that and I've so I've paused and I've said we know what this means Jane she goes yeah. I know what this means <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know yeah. what this yeah, means yeah. <laughs> so not an idiot you made yeah. you made to do <laughs> yeah. yeah Dave's rolled yeah yeah so, Jesus but no look but there isn't the, the alibi is that there's no way that that Jane's mate would have been able to get in the door without that, that sliding door potentially being open. Yeah, yeah. Most likely. Yeah, So okay. that's like the alibi there as well. So yeah. it's it's just a fascinating... The it's CCTV, weird. It's very weird. The CCTV... So I went to the building, mate. I said, right, let's let's. Oh, you find- do have CCTV Yeah, yeah, here. we got it all. So the CCTV, I said to him, well, surely there's CCTV in the, in the building. And, and they said, they got uh, Ralph, he goes... Yeah, we got CCTV everywhere, everywhere that you can come in and out. I said, well, let's just look at the CCTV. I said, I'll go, I'll do it. I'll yeah, go through yeah. every minute of it. He'd already done that, and he said that he's found that there's one very, very minuscule black, um, what's it called? Black, black spot. Black spot on the on the CCTV. So the CCTV works. Really? You get twenty on the on the screen. It gets divided into twenty blocks. Yep. When three blocks move, then it records. Otherwise, it just takes up too much hard drive. Oh, okay. Six. So it's so not recording all the time. No, I think that's how most of them work. Yeah, right. So if you, we figured out that oh. if you walk directly in off the street and leave directly from here back onto the street with a fucking Santa sack of fucking Apple <laughs> gear in your pocket and a couple of nice fat red dresses, you can get away with it. Because you haven't the, set off more than one camera. Nah, that's it's the only way. So whoever whoever did it, whether it's Dave, whether it, whether it was Ross, whether it was whoever whoever the fuck else. Me, whether Have it was you ever me. put yourself there? <laughs> yeah. Well, Think I'm of gonna, yourself, mate. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah Vietnam. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. You went to Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, whoever did it... Travel company. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoever did it absolutely fluked the black spot on the... Like, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating run of events. It's so... Me and Jane would... We were we were having so much fun sleuthing this whole thing. Yeah. I mean, she never got a... Cost her, you know, 10 grand for, for a bit of a laugh, but... <laughs> You know, oh. I can picture her just being like, "This is classic." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm loving this. Right on a typewriter. <laughs> I got, uh, I got rolled uh, by the balcony uh, one night. So I had a, a girl come back to my place, and I live like first floor. This right? in Thailand. <laughs> no, no, this is definitely in Melbourne. Let's be honest here, Rosie. Yeah. <laughs> Was she Tai Chi? Uh, no, this is that's the end of the story. I just wanted to brag. <laughs> So I get up about I get up about four in the morning and I walk out uh, to like to go to the bathroom and I see that the balcony door is open and I was like oh we'd been drinking but I was like I don't remember opening that so I went over locked it shut it and then the next morning uh, when we get up to go and she's like oh where did you put my handbag and I said oh, I haven't touched it and she's like oh, I can't find it so we had a quick look around and I was like fuck the front door the balcony door was open and someone had come up over and I'm first floor so that I'm not street level. They'd obviously gotten a boost back up over my balcony, checked the door, and then it was open. So come in, swipe the um, uh, handbag off the couch, and then gone back over. And I had like <laughs> my wallet in my ki- on the kitchen bench, my laptop and stuff in the other room. But they just come up, grabbed that, and took it off. Out. No shit. Yeah. So it's pretty brazen, like to yeah. come up oh, over a first floor balcony. Yeah. So this is because it's you know one of those new apartments. It's got like a little glass panel in the balcony, so you can see into the yep. apartment. And so they must have just looked, had seen the handbag and gone, oh, let's have a crack. That's do you know what's classic, scary? Like, pe- what people will do just to get like a few hundred hey, bucks, you know? Like, I remember um, there was a big sweep on it um, that came on the news of just people that would, someone would go walk to the other side of, um, you know, filling their car up with petrol. Yeah. And in between, the other person would just duck out, nip the bag in from the other side of the car and then drive off. Like, so you've got a car here, right? Yeah. You get out of your car here to start filling up with petrol. Then when you finish filling up, you start walking away or in that process of being turned around to face the petrol. Someone's here, open this door, take the car, take the, uh, the handbag, drive off. See, I always, yeah. I always lock my car when I go back in to pay. Yeah. You guys do that? Really? Oh, nah. I always do that for Do sure. you really? Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I was told Shit. that from early on as a kid. Really? Yeah, no, oh, I don't yeah. even. Yeah, no one really told me. I just, um, I just do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like Because usually, I'm like, my phone will be on the console or something like that, and I just like, oh, yeah. just like it. yeah, it's just, just easier. easier. Yeah, for sure. Fuck yeah, it I thought I about trust it anyone. You. Yeah, yeah. I thought. Well, you shouldn't trust anyone. No. Nah. that's the that's the sad <laughs> thing. In the city, in Melbourne, right? In Melbourne, safest fucking place you can ever live. Yeah, I've been robbed four times in two years. Really? No, no. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Been, it's uh, four times in four years. Um, <clears throat> I've been here nearly two years now. And I was in South Melbourne where, yeah. we, where we first recorded the first show. So, have you ever been to Magic Cafe on the corner of Faraz Street and Bank uh, and no. Faraz and Bank Street? It is. It's a really good cafe. Changed hands. I haven't been there since, so I don't know what it's like now. But I think it probably still pretty good. Anyway, <clears throat> Magic Cafe. I went there. Right. I went there to have um, breakfast with my uncle. And my uncle. Um, I'm sitting facing my uncle here. There's the entry, the doors here. I can see from on about a, a you know. 45 degree angle I can see my car where I parked yeah I'm sitting there having breakfast with my uncle yep no worries had a great catch up this is about 9am I reckon mm. on a I believe it was a weekday and then we finish up and my uncle says do you mind dropping me back at my <clears throat> my truck because I park he's a apple he owns an apple orchard and he'd been to the market so he's got this huge truck and he had to park miles away I said yeah yeah absolutely no worries we jump my car and there's like rubbish all over my car and I thought that there'd been like rats in my car or something like that because that happened that happened before like rats been in your car before <laughs> that's <laughs> very strange that's a whole other story yeah, yeah. 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 maybe I'm just thinking Ninja Turtles yeah. but um, first thought rats <laughs> yeah. yeah they get me definitely rats yeah. so, so and then I look behind I'm like fuck where's my training gear I f- must have forgotten my training bag and then I look I'm like didn't forget all my tradie tools mm. and then I just dropped my head I said I've, I've been fucking robbed here <laughs> it rolled middle of the day in clear eyesight of where I'm sitting my car was, was, was robbed blind. That's insane. Wow. How and how'd they, they get in? Like, they bust the lock? Yeah, yeah, they did. So, that's exactly what they did. They bust the lock. They they cut around it and pushed it through. Yeah. And then you can just turn the whole head of the lock, yep, yep. basically, and you can let stuff in. So It's pretty courageous, though, yeah, if you think it? about it. Yeah, I was like, it. like so it was during the day. You. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. boys. Could have yeah. been anyone. Well played. And it was right in front of... So, where, where my car was parked wasn't, like, down a little side street that was near this random cafe. It was parked in front of... The what's it called the railway hotel, which is like oh, a yeah, busy yeah. pub. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, tons so, of people around. Yeah, it was classic. Fuck. Yeah, got I, I had my my car broken into and bike stolen a couple of years ago, and then we yeah. had two bikes stolen off the balcony up here as well. Yeah, same thing. Jump over the balcony, snip, take the bikes. Oh, so they were locked up. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's so bad. It's yeah. insane, isn't it? I had my car broken into <clears throat> once. I'd left it on the street. Uh, this is in North Fitzroy, so yeah, pretty safe area. Yeah, and. I go out to it the next morning and the locks bust and they tried to, you know, uh, jimmy the ignition and didn't get it. And it wasn't until like uh, a couple of weeks later that I went looking for a CD because I had a bunch of CDs in the glove box. And I, I listened to some pretty full-on metal. Yeah. But uh, they'd only taken one CD. So right. they'd gone through it and they've gone, this is shit. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they just stole one. Yeah, yeah. They're like, we oh. can't even sell this shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Rosie <laughs> actually found more CDs <laughs> when he came yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Cash converters, right? Yeah. Take this shit. Yeah. 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 That's classic. Cool. Cool. Uh, uh, I just quickly I love the pattern interrupt this is going to be so funny on YouTube just a dog with a trombone <laughs> on his head it's just much bizarre he's just come back Podcast. from the beach <laughs> yes. I yes. know oh, so, you poor bastard for the listeners that don't know what's going on Ziggy Ziggy my little dog because we're recording from um, from home today because it's an early one uh, couldn't get in the offices and um, Ziggy's had his had his little uh, his little little is little, understatement little, little tackle ta- tackle taken off and he's wearing all these funny funny headgear and yeah, it looks strange. Ro- Rosie walked in. He's like, "Oh, it's doggy dress up now." <laughs> yeah, he's going for a swim. Tom's, yeah. Tom's still dressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so Rosie, what's um, how's the comedy festival going for you? You were saying before the show that you, you know, it, it's a it's a medium sized run for you this time around. Yeah. So <laughs> if you do the full run, uh, so comedy festival goes from like 29th of March till 22nd of April, I think for everyone. So if yep. you do a full run, it's about 22 shows. And I'm only doing half of it. So I'm doing two weeks. I'm doing 12 shows. I've added two more next week uh, on Friday 13th and uh, Saturday the 14th. So if you're in Melbourne, you want to come to the show, yeah. 8.15 at the European Beer Cafe. The show's called Hold My Beer. Um, and you can get tickets at comedyfestival.com.au. But it's just been – it's just so much fun just doing half a run. Like you yeah. just know – I know like, you know, apart from the extra shows, which are going to be fun anyway, there's only three to go and – I'm already tired, so to add that other two weeks in just would have been absolutely brutal. And yeah, I'm on yeah. at 9.30, so one, I can't eat before a show. 
So I'll, I'll eat at like 4 p.m. and then won't eat until after the show, if oh, at all. Wow. So I'll just get too full and tired and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then being on at 9.30, you just can't go to sleep straight away. You know, yeah, you're all yeah. wired up and full of adrenaline. So I get home. If I happen to get home by 11.30 midnight, <clears throat> I'm sitting up till one watching telly because I'm just wide awake. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, I'm fucking knackered. Yeah, <laughs> I've sure. only done half the run. So how's it work as a comedian? Like, obviously you don't just do stand-up. You've got a lot of other stuff that you're involved in. But mm. do these... Um, Festivals, like, do you do the other festivals? Do you do other festivals around the world? Like, uh, I've, I've never or- done Edinburgh or Montreal or anything like yep. that. I'd, I'd like to do Edinburgh a lot of times because I uh, write a lot for television. I've been stuck in Melbourne, yeah, you right. know, working on that because I do a lot with uh, Australian Rules Footy. Yeah, and that season just sort of precludes you from doing a lot of travel when those festivals are on. Yeah, mm. which is totally fine. I, I, I imagine Edinburgh would be an absolute nightmare. Yeah, it'd just be hard work, you know. Just why so. So many shows on. I think there's like 3,000 shows on. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Melbourne has about 600 at the moment. Mm. And just the competition being, you know, um, no profile over there, yeah. starting from scratch, you know, paying for accommodation, all the stuff, yeah. you're just up against it. Yeah. This is a great way to lose 10 grand. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, that's right. Yeah. Plus getting your shit stolen. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And it probably will get stolen. So yeah. add another 10 grand yeah. to it. No one's So yeah, that's right. And, you know, people come back, it just sounds like they've been to war. And you're yeah. like, man, that just sounds so brutal. And I just... I don't know whether um, I've passed that point in my life yeah. where I can be fucked doing that. <laughs> yeah. So you need the bloke handing out your pamphlets out the front of the uh, the, oh, town, the town hall, the mate, library, eight hours a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people have to do that. And yeah. you know, people have shows at four in the afternoon, and they'll be like, "Oh, I yeah. got I got seven people in tonight. I was wrapped." And you're like, "Fuck, yeah. that just sounds so dire." You poor you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's would, like uh, the show we went to the other night was like that. This oh. bloke came up at the town hall and he and he gave he, you the flyer. Yeah, yeah. And but he was having a chat. We were having a chat, and he yeah. was and he was telling us all these places that he played. And uh, I was like, oh, he played like the comedy, the comedy sh- store in La Jolla in, in, in the US, and, which I'd heard of before, and all, and all these festivals here and there. I'm like, oh, it's sick. And I said to Georgie, I'm like, should we go, go with this dude? I like this guy. Like, yeah. We'll back him in, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we went there, and I reckon, I genuinely reckon, just from the vibes, that the six people in the front, front row was filled. Yep. Six people in the front row were, I reckon, family. Okay. Just judging how they interacted after the show. Right. There was a guy in the back left-hand corner who was his laugh guy, I feel like, because every gag, he was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> It was actually really good, though. Like, yeah, he was it. classic ad- addition to the show. That's yeah. classic. And there was me, yeah. And it was me and George at the back because we, la- we got in like five minutes late and, and George was like, fuck, I don't want to get yeah, railed yeah. by the comedian. So I'm like, oh, we'll just sit at the back. Yeah. And then it was literally like three metres away. But there was about nine of us in the room and, uh, and he came up and really, really thanked us at the end. And oh, he was wow. like... So I imagine... Oh, did you go through that shit what coming his, up? What's his name? Uh, something Leone. Okay. Some, uh, Maybe I don't even Cassie, know him. Cass, Cassie Leone. I imagine you'd have to go through that, though. Something like that. Like, oh, they're, they're, you've got to start from somewhere. Yeah. You know? unless, unless you get a TV profile. True. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you've got to do the flying. And I, I'm really bad at the flying. Because people <laughs> people always go, you're funny. And it's like, oh, fucking, I'll kill yeah. you. I'll kill you. What do you reckon yeah. I'm going to say, mate? <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, you know I'm going to say that I think I'm funny. Yeah. And don't put me on the spot like that. And <laughs> it's just like, like, yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, fuck off. And then yeah. then I get that attitude and they're like, well, we're not coming to your show. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I have other people do my flying for me now because yeah. it's just... it's just Big week. You yeah. Can, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's just, yeah, It's like an eight-year-old Bangladeshi kid. But he does a good job. His family are well fed. Yeah. Is he handed about in Bangladesh or over here? Yeah, no, everywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm huge Mate, in the no, dish. He's a very funny too. Yeah. If you buy a pair of Nikes, you'll find it in the in the shoe. That's right. Oh, that was yeah. great. Yeah. So it's um, you do see a lot of people out there flying, and some people are really good at it and can yeah. convince people. And I think it, it's it does help to be out on the street and just trying to sell your own show. But for yeah. me. The hour before the show, you just kind of want to focus on the show sometimes, and so you just you you lose a bit of that to yeah. to try and get people in there. Yeah, and then no. sometimes you can be out there for an hour, like flogging your ass, and you'll drag two people in. Yeah, and you're like fuck, that's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah and it it's is. and it's the I think it'd be really hard. It's like um the last three weeks I've been making sales calls for Ventry because we our sales chick uh, left us. Yeah, and getting just any sort of no from somebody. Is a bit dejecting, you absolutely. Know? Or that 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 negative attitude, kind of, you know, it's just like oh, it's demoralising after you a, a while, bit. yeah. And you just you start to take it personally, and then you've got to turn around and go and just do a, a comedy show straight after that. <laughs> so if you get yeah, 
20 people just – and you see, you know, people take your flyer and then just drop it. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Ah, Throw it in the bin. Yeah, get out of my eyesight <laughs> yeah, first, yeah. you know. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, one sec, mate. Sure, this sounds great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. Hand it to him pre-crumpled. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I've already pissed on it for you, mate. Yeah, yeah. Please just come to the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shocking. So uh, things like that. You're just like, fuck, you're up against it. and Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> we touched on it last show, but I wanted to get into it a bit more. Um, how do you go without just being in front of a crowd? Have you, have you ever had an issue with that? Like, like, um, a lot of people have a fear of public speaking, a um, bit of stage fright. I've like. never had um, – I don't know why, like, the fear of public speaking has never bothered me. Like, I, you know, when I started out, I was super nervous and stuff, but it wasn't about being up on the stage. It was about being funny, oh, so yeah. whether or not I was good. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it, I, I wasn't, like, out, outwardly um, – you know, wanting to do drama and stuff and being the performer at school, but I was sort of the class dickhead. So I was yeah. always comfortable in that realm of getting laughs for, you know, just being an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that never bothered me. So I was always kind of back myself in that sort of realm. But yeah, there, there's times when uh, uh, nerves over, like just overwhelm you, like the first mm. time you do TV or, you know, when you put pressure on a big, a big gig. Yeah. You know, when there's like 3,000 people in a theater or whatever. Mm. And that's when you just. You know, you drink lots of water beforehand. You still got cotton mouth. You're just so nervous, and yeah. you're just trying to calm yourself so you don't stumble over those first couple of words. Because if you get, if you miss hit that first joke, and you lose confidence in yourself, it's a fucking very quick downward spiral. Yeah. Jesus, because you just you just lose all ability. You yeah. lose how to speak. You might fuck up a word, and you're like, just slow down. Yeah, yeah. focus. Get it yeah. back. 100%. Yeah, whereas if you get the first one, you know, out of the middle of the bat, and you're like, I'm away here. Yeah, yeah the confidence momentum. just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get a crowd on your side. You just lift, yeah. because yeah, I feel like um, <clears throat> this poor bloke the other night had nine, nine, nine people in his show. He started off real shaky. Yeah. Real shaky, he did. And... Um, and that and puts your audience on edge. Yeah, that's so right. So th- that makes them uncomfortable because they're like, they want you to win. Yeah. yeah. But you've, they're nervous now. So they're like, yeah. oh, God, where's this yeah. going? So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. this teeth clenched and everyone's yeah, yeah. sphincters are tight. Yeah. And he's like, oh, Bill mate. Rocks in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but because um, he got to like the middle part and the latter end of his show and some of the jokes he was coming out with, like he was saying some stuff and I thought about him a couple, like one of them I thought about 10 seconds later, I'm like, that was fucking that was the most epic joke. Yeah. But it got fuck off. Nothing. Yeah. yeah right. From me. Because I thought about it, I'm like, he just doesn't have us on his side, like yeah. you said, you know? And and I think he, he built a bit of momentum towards the end. But if he had it started off well, all these good jokes that he had that he was delivering well halfway through would have been hits. Oh, they God. were just kind of like, yeah, not bad, mate. Yeah. Good on you. Good on you, mate. And yeah. I, I think you also get, you <laughs> can get um, hurt a little bit. And, you know, you never blame the crowd for this, but when it's a small crowd, they're less likely to, you know, have that raucous laughter and the wave yeah. laughter where it just carries on. So you can just, you'll get a laugh, it'll drop, you got to start again. Yeah, It's sort of like true. trying to start a lawnmower is the way we kind of do it. There's no, yeah. wa- there's no wave to ride. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah paddle yeah. really hard. You stand up, wave drops, and you're like, "Oh, I'll start again." Yeah, yeah. And mm. yeah, but that that the weirdest thing is when you get a packed crowd and that happens. You're like, "What? How is that happening?" It's like yeah. it happens on mats, and you can't get the psyche of a crowd. You can never predict mm. how they're going to go. Yeah. Sometimes they'll be really chatty beforehand, and you think, "Oh, this is going to be an easy one." Yeah. And then you go out, and it's not. And then other times I'll be really quite pre-show and you're like, oh, I reckon I'm going to have to work hard here. And then they just explode. Mm, and you're like, oh, okay, wasn't predicting this. Can you see the crowd? When you're on there, uh, how, uh, the, how dark is the... Because uh, like, of the, the lights are coming so hard into my <laughs> eyes, I can see usually about two, maybe three rows back. But beyond that, you ge- actually genuinely can't see. And so many people were like, you were staring right at me. I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. I just, you know, make eye contact with where I think people are sitting, but I, I can't see anyone. So, yeah, right. Yeah. I it's look weird. Look at me in the eyes or the shoulder. Yeah. 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 It, it, people go, oh yeah, there was one bit where you were staring right at me. It's like, yeah, I, I have no idea about yeah. that. Yeah. The worst now is um, uh, when people are looking at their phones. So they think because it's close to their body and the, the light's shining oh. towards them, they think, oh, the light's away. So you can't see it, but yeah. they're lit up. <laughs> yeah. You just see this blue face. Oh, that's yeah. shocking. And sometimes you want to say something because you yeah. think it's bothering everyone, but it happens so often now, you're just like, don't even bother because yeah, yeah, yeah. no one else can see it. Yeah, yeah you'd be too busy. That's shit though, show. isn't it? 
It's yeah. unbelievable. I saw a girl, it's I went to a show uh, a few years ago at the town hall. So it's full crowd, everyone's loving it. And I looked across and a girl was on Facebook, like just scrolling oh, through. Man. And you're like, how is your attention span? <laughs> yeah. Like you're, in, yeah. you're being entertained. It's right <laughs> yeah. there in front of you. That's right. And yeah. you go, well, that's, no, no, I need to, I need to know. Yeah. And, but you, and I'm assuming she paid as well. Absolutely. There you go. It and just, fucking I doing couldn't this. believe it. Yeah. That that's people just need to do that in an hour. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, it might be addiction. Oh, but it that's, is. That's what I, I'm. I've just had a week off Instagram. I've turned my phone to um, inverted colours. Oh yeah. So the apps look the same. Most of the stuff works all right. But like, if you go on YouTube or ESPN.com for videos, they're all black. They're all black. The whites are black. Some of the colours. And trying to get myself off my phone. So you deleted Instagram <coughs> or you moved the app? No, I deleted way. the app. Yeah. And um, I'm. So that doesn't delete you. You can come no. back on and you're there. No, I'll be back on in the next few days, really. But yeah. I'm going to try and have like a week off every month, I reckon. Okay. Just, go, just, just to give myself a break. Because it's, it's been fucking great. But I I get a lot of business through Instagram, through my own person. People like talking to a person, you know. Yeah, they know yeah. me as the face of the business now. And, yeah. you know, it's... So I, I do need it. I don't need it, but I, it's very beneficial to have, you know. So. Oh, absolutely. And I'm the same with Facebook. Like, I yeah. would love to step away from Facebook, but that's where a lot of people can contact me because it's so yeah. easy. Yeah. But, um, oh, yeah, I'd love to step away from that. Yeah. Well, just, that's the thing, though. Like, I mean, I, I, I <clears throat> like, don't. Like, I just, mm. I totally get that. Look, social media, we can't control it. Social media is yeah. the best for personal business, personal branding. It business, really is. You know, like, yeah. you can't get away with it. So, no, you've got to just figure out a way to have fun with it, you know? Yeah. That's a good point, actually, because, like, <coughs> a lot of people get their, you know, they get their uh, misleading news and stuff from that. Oh, I don't get my news from Facebook. Like, I'm, yeah. not, a, I'm not an idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you just yeah, go, to, yeah. go to the sites that you trust. Yeah. And anyone who gets like that, where you go, well, you're probably going to get skewed anyway. You're going to believe what you want to believe. That's right. No matter what's put up there. So, yeah, That's right. I, I don't use it for that. Mm. No, and look, I, 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 so I'm a massive hermit crab. I don't watch any news or anything. Yeah. And uh, the only news that I would get would maybe be if someone that I follow um, would put something up and I'd just have a quick scroll. But I just I don't care about the news at all. Like I got rid of it uh, six months ago when I just started realizing it was just super negative and yeah. um, I just fucked it off. But like, there's, so, you, there's, so you don't watch the news? Mate, literally I don't watch the about news two months ago. I really? News for yeah. Two years now. Two months ago, I found out that um, gay marriage was legalized in Australia. <laughs> literally. I had no idea. Really? Yeah, I don't watch it. I literally... It's been the so best thing for vote. me. So you didn't vote? Well, I mean, I, I voted yes, but that was uh, in October, was it? Or when we were supposed to vote? But uh, it came out yeah. in... Pardon the pun. It came out in January or something? Or I think... Yeah, December. December. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea. Is I was that also right? I was also in Iceland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But well, that, yeah. That's a little bit of a difference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you look happy now. Yeah. No, but I had no idea. And um it's been great for me, but that we, we So you were driving past gay weddings. <laughs> yeah. Get out of it, it's not legal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, look, it was actually my dad told me that he was going to a wedding uh, of a lesbian couple. Yeah. And um I was like, What? And he goes, You mean oh, you're going to watch him have sex? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> On the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dad was looking at Pornhub. Yeah, I was yeah. like, Dad, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. But, um, it's a good family. Yeah. Oh, we're close. Tight family. But uh, yeah, I had no idea. And he's like, oh, I know it's Australia. And I was like, what? I freaked out. But people, <laughs> I don't know, out. you get a lot of posts, you know, and you hear things like, oh, social media is so bad and like it's ruining the whole world. But like, we can't control it. It's great for my business. It's great for adventure. It's great for all yeah. our personal brands. Like, we have a lot more control than people think. Like, you can choose to follow and unfollow whoever you want. Yeah. I just try to have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, that's good. But I think... The the problem with it is, and we talk about about this. Uh, we we got a comedian. We talk about shit like like, like yeah. you know like was we talk about this st- with this kind of stuff. We talked about it with like we always end up on this topic. Yeah, something we, something we similar to it. With um, we're thinking about it a lot. Yeah, yeah. But my mate just got off at uh, Louis, and he said it was the best thing he's ever done. He's he had his kid Ted with him, and his his kid's like one year old, and he's like daddy, daddy, and he's like all right, Teddy, hang on, hang on, and he was scrolling on Instagram, and Gert, his missus, was sitting next to him scrolling on Instagram as well. He goes, so I'll put on your put on your. Barney and Friends or whatever the kids watch <laughs> put on 30 minute episode of, on like the DVD or on Netflix or whatever yeah. and then um, and then uh, so Louis put it on and then he's lost 30 minutes like the TV show has ended and he realised and he's like fuck what have I just done Yeah, I've just lost 30 minutes with my son that I yeah, can't get yeah. back just uh, leave that door open Tommy for Ziggy right. to float in and out I think Davey will be cool with that um, <clears throat> and yeah I agree I think you can use it for good and, and you can go overboard but the the apps are made to be addictive, you know. That's that's the that's the only the only well, issue. Well, that's a good point, isn't it? Yeah. They are designed to give you that hit. I was I was listening to this is um uh, slightly 
different thing, but, you know, built to get into your brain. I was uh, listening to a thing on the radio and they were talking about uh, the pokies and how the pokies are built, you know, mm. to to be addictive and they're designed to that. But you get more of a dopamine hit <clears throat> from almost winning than oh, winning. Isn't that terrible? Yeah, right. So when you win, you're like, oh, that was good. But when you almost win, you're like, fuck, that was great. Yeah. 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 And that, that's yeah. just incredible that they yeah. prey on the fact that you – you know, when you nearly got one, it's yeah. like, yeah, that's even a bigger but hit. But you lost. That fucks your you brain. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't win. You're yeah. like, yeah, I won. But yeah, yeah that other one was, yeah. that close one was <laughs> better really good. <laughs> but think yeah. about, like, so if we're moving into the area of self-awareness now, it's kind of like, you know, when we've all played that single game, you know, that sort of stuff. A lot of blokes talk about how the chase is so fun. Yeah. No blokes talk about, I mean, just from maybe my friendship group, but I guess some of the single blokes that love being single at the moment talk about, oh, fuck, I love the chase, man. But they don't specifically say, I love banging tons of chicks. Yeah. Because it's, you almost get there. It's the exact same premise, you know? Yeah, So it's yeah. like, if you can start to look yeah, equally no, upon you, yourself. You're exactly right. You know what I mean? It's the adrenaline rush of That's the right. whole build-up. That's right, yeah. And then, yeah, you get to the, you get to the point, you're like, oh, yeah. Well, what yeah. this is great. Do you guys gamble? No, no. I've never gambled. No, yeah. no. no. Um, but so, uh, that's one thing I can't understand. Like you know, I'll have a flutter at uh, Melbourne Cup and stuff, but I can switch it off and it doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. But just I don't understand uh, that addiction. Neither. Like how people you know just spend time in the TAB and because yeah. I just you work so hard for your cash well, just yeah. to give it away. I'm like fuck that. It's, it doesn't. But even when I win on a race, like because I'm the same. I if I'm I'll, I'll only really bet on the on the races and only for like. You know, a couple of the big events, maybe, and and some some race seasons I won't bet at all. You know, yeah. I might spend probably spent a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks over, over the course of my life. And even yeah. when I win, I'm like, oh yeah, one yeah. one hundred and fifty bucks or yeah. two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks. But I've, I'm spending. I'm I feel like I'm aware enough that I'm spending one hundred fifty bucks on this particular day. <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah. Spend, I'm like, yeah, cool. Let's just go get that bit. Like, it, yeah. it, it's not even like I don't even get the fucking rush no, out of I don't it. Get no. rush. It's a, it is a strange run because some people just get. Like you think of the people that are the deranged pokey addicts, mm. like that go. I had a chick who was staying with me, Ching. She uh she was Chinese and she was a lovely, lovely chick. She was a lawyer, smart as fuck, so nice. Uh, young chick. She's like twenty six, and she started coming home really late. <clears throat> she she she'd come from Adelaide, I think, and she just started like with a new firm in Melbourne. Right. And she'd come home. She started to come home really late. Um, for for a run. She was with me for about three months, and then. Yeah, like second month in, I'm like, hey, I said one night to her, I said, Ching, you, what have you been doing? Yeah. You're getting home really late. You got, you got a guy going on. She's like, oh, no. She was like really shy. And, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll leave it. Yeah. And then like, you know, and a week later, and she's coming home super late. Like, I'm not seeing her. I'm only seeing her in the day. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing tonight? Yeah. And she goes, oh, I'm embarrassed. And yeah, she was down the casino every night. So I really? think that's a lot yeah. to play with like water, if I'm being honest with you. So, really? Well, <clears throat> so I, I have another part-time job, which is like a servicing job. And yep. a lot of the jobs um, we do are at casinos, and sporting clubs and things. And, you know, this is obviously not any news to anyone, but like the surprisingly overwhelming demographic is, you know, people that are retired, mm. you know. And I just feel like it has a lot to do with boredom. Yeah, but if you're okay. Because you see them, you see them go... In groups, so there's that sense of community, you yep. know, which is obviously a, a an evolutionary need for it's us. Part of life, they're all having a bit of fun with a bit of dopamine kicks here and there, and they're drinking, they're laughing. Like it gives yeah, okay. them. It's it very them, social. It is, yeah. It gives them something to do. Like, but I guess the sad thing is that, you know, they're losing money. They're playing off something which has negative feedback and negative drawbacks. And as social as it is, when you're actually involved in the task. It's just you and the machine. Yeah. So they're not actually mm. doing this, yes. you know? Yeah, yeah. Which I think is quite sad. But mm. I feel like boredom has a, a part to play on, on many addictions and many sort of, you know, mental disorders yeah. and things. See, porn addiction, they reckon. Oh, yeah. I reckon it's... Well, uh, they reckon. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah no, nah, that's interesting. My mate, my mate um, Tommy's a really big punter. And um, my mate Corey was working at Sportsbet... Uh, and and we were uh, one day we were like we should look up Tommy's Tommy's record see so much <laughs> he's put across because he's put across a lot he's, he's a foreman so he earns really good really good wa- uh, yeah. wage smart dude it's never I don't think it's ever gone um, out of out of gotten out of hand right um, but the way that he explains it to me is he goes well I give myself an allowance per week which is a decent a bit a bit and he goes and that's you know that's what I use for my entertainment which is punting he goes yeah. I know that I'm never going to win I know I'm throwing my money away. But I might spend 200 bucks a week on 
that side of my life, that's me, my entertainment. I study the form, I get excited by this, I do these carnivals and stuff. Yep. And it's, you know, he's like, it's like going to a night at the opera. People like to spend four or five hours having a nice dinner and going to a night at the opera for their entertainment. That's not what I like to do with my entertainment. I entertain myself by following the horses and, and, and footy, footy, punning on footy and stuff like that. So, you know, you can kind of understand yeah. that. But, I mean, that then it just... At some point, for most people, it gets out of hand. You well, know? It's, it's a half justification in my books. It's like, like I mean, yeah, yeah, look, I understand that this math isn't great for me, but you know, I give <laughs> yeah, myself I enjoy a it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't like the opera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, exactly. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. I just do Funny better that. the opera. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. One of my favourite things to do. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd, I'd see. I'd, I'd see. What, I'd watch math opera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I watch train spotting. I watch train spotting live on stage. That was that was like a math opera. Genuine. Last year it was sick when train spotting two came out. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, it was train, train spotting live. Yeah, it was really good. They played it in played it in Melbourne for like four weeks. Mm. Yeah, okay. Mm. Um, so. Do you guys feel like you do anything that <clears throat> feeds an addiction when you get bored? I mean, it's a very easy. Like when you're writing, uh, trying to write the show, or whatever. Very easy to just get lost in the internet. Like, oh yeah, that that's kind of where what I'll do to when I'm bored mm. to just you know look at news sites yeah. and just. Chase that kind of thing down, but no, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've um, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I when I have, I'll give myself like a, you know, five or ten minute break after work. Or something. But I mean, the work that I do, I really, really enjoy. Yep. Um, but you know, time will pass. Um, I mean, I, I've, I'm interested because I feel like no amount of meditation through my years of life could ever stop me from just losing an extra 20 minutes just going down a rabbit hole on YouTube. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. I just lose myself on YouTube. And you can yeah, let yourself YouTube's do it, but killer, then you man. just sort of go, "All right, you've got a deadline. One more video, and then you're done." Exactly. Like you, and and the other thing is deadlines. Um, fucking great because you need to get shit done. A hundred percent. You know, because otherwise 100%. you lose your livelihood. So. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm not. I've never. The punting's never grabbed me. I used to smoke cigarettes, and I gave them up like that. I mean, when I'm really drunk, I'll have a cigarette or two sometimes these days. Yeah. But like, smoked for a f- fair few years there, and, okay. and, and, and socially smoked for ages. Yeah. No worries there. <clears throat> How was but, that? Like, uh, to you just went cold turkey. Yeah, I smoked from when I was probably 14 to about 18. I smoked, smoked. Yep. And then from about 18 to 20. Five twenty six. I socially smoked, but I'd smoke a pack or two a week. Yeah, right. Like socially smoked, I'd drink every weekend for sure at least. Yeah. And what I would do is I would justify I'm only having a cigarette if I've had a beer. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, but I would finish work or, or, or football. More, more so it was football. And I'd go through the bottle shop and I'd go um, slab of beers if I was going to the, 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 my mate's joint or, or six beers and a packet of Peter Stives and 20 soft pack. That's, yeah, how, yeah. that's what I smoked. The cool ones. Yeah, yeah. 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 Flick at the yeah, bottom. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And... So, but then I would have a sip of my beer, and I would instantly want to die straight away. Yeah, straight away. Yeah. I, would, I would, I would, I would get the beer quickly, so I'd, I'd have a sip quickly, so I could have a dart. dart in the week. The kind of like the weekend had landed, kind of like yep. you know. And I did that. I did that for years and years and years. And then yeah, I got to the point where I was like, I don't want to smoke anymore, and I just didn't. I didn't smoke for like you know two or three years. And then now, you know, I get a little bit angry at myself if I have you know a dart. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or more than one or two in a night, and that that happens from time to time. And I feel a bit a bit of an idiot, but I never had. An, any issues getting getting rid of that? But yeah, for me, one hundred percent the internet. Like I'm, mm. I'm with the phone thing. Like it's great that you don't have to do it. Like I have said, like many times, I'm addicted to my phone, yeah. the internet, and my phone, Instagram, <coughs> Instagram, and YouTube. And I fucking really do like YouTube. But as soon as I come home, I turn on the TV and I go straight to YouTube and I just start a fucking six really? hour. Yeah, it's just when I'm when I'm if I'm doing a, sending some emails, doing some stuff from here. Like I work from my office, but if I, I do some work from here, yep. If I'm making some food, whatever, I've got YouTube playing. Really? Yep. Most of the day. Yeah. What about Live Leak? Why don't you go to Live Leak? <laughs> What's that? Step it up a bit. So what Live is Leak is like the dark, <clears throat> the dark YouTube. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. A... That's where uh, people put up, you know, like insurgents videos and stuff oh, like that. Like shit that. <laughs> Great. Shit that they can't put on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Live Leak. Stuff oh, I yeah. really want to work. Uh, it's like, to. yeah, it's next level. <laughs> live Leak. Live Leak is every now and then a Live Leak video comes up on YouTube or Facebook or something. It's some sort of like ISIS beheading. Yeah, I've seen that shit before. Yeah, it's yeah. Fun. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's some there's some grim shit, but that's a. That's a wormhole you can head down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nah. No, but look, like addiction, I don't know. Look, as someone that, uh, you know, has uh, played around with addiction, look, like, that sounds weird. I've never had a heroin addiction. <laughs> yeah, I've dabbled. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, dabbled a little bit. Yeah. yeah, smoked a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, addiction has such a negative connotation, I feel, in, in today's society. It's like, you know, we were talking about The Power of Habit before. Charles Dewey's great yeah. book. Like, uh, things that are, I'm addicted to... Um, 
in life today predominantly a positive addiction. Yeah, no, I really I feel like yeah, those, yeah, you know? not all yeah. negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, I used to watch. I remember like being a teenager, just walking around with a twenty four seven boner <laughs> and just like being bored, watch a bit of porn, have a sesh. Yeah, like, you know. Uh, but those things have changed to now. CrossFit, I absolutely love. I'm really addicted to it. I really, really love it. Yeah. Um, but then I'm also equally addicted to. Um, uh, I really like. I really, really do enjoy um, sitting down and reading. Now I can really lose myself in that, and that's become a real like. It's a little bit of a negative thing now because I'm like, fuck, I need to learn something. So that's a bit average. But over, like, yeah, I but guess it, generally. It's positive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it yeah. is positive. Yeah. No, so, I mean. When you're at CrossFit, how, how quickly do you take your shirt off? Oh, very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly. Good. Yeah, yeah. Within, hey, within seconds walking. It's, worth asking. it's, about, it's yeah. about asking when he takes his pants off. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, right. And that's right. about yeah. three or four minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Once you're in the box, though, pants are off. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. There's a bit of an innuendo there. But uh, look, I'm, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm actually a coach. So pants are off before I start actually right. telling the members right. what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. <coughs> have you done CrossFit before? I have. Oh, whereabouts? Uh, so I was at uh, the Fitzroy one. Ah, uh, yep, yep. Yeah. That's, uh, was that uh, CrossFit Victoria? Yes, that's yeah, the one. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's it was, good. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was just a bit too, uh, it just got a bit samey for me. Yeah. It was like, you know what? I'm sick of squats. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the irony of that is that CrossFit is like prides itself on being constantly varied? You guys suck. You're just the same shit every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was one thing I found. Yeah. It wasn't as varied as I hoped. Because, you know, I'd yeah. watched the CrossFit games on ESPN and yeah. loved what they did in that. But in this particular uh, box that we were training in, you go, they just they don't have enough of the equipment and it just wasn't varied. Right. You know, it was almost the same stuff over and over. And yeah. I just kind of got bored with that. Mm. Yeah, that, I mean, routine sucks for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think, um, I, I think I've got some healthy-ish addictions. Like, I think I'm addicted to making adventure at work. Yeah, you know? that's great. I mean, that's, yeah, I, I, I get, you know, if I get a day, like, it was really hard for me. <clears throat> I don't know if you're the same, Rosie, with, with, with you know, comedy and, and trying to always get better. I, I, it, it might be because I'm in the young period with my, where I'm at with my company, but I had, a, I had the Easter weekend off. Like, yep. I had Friday and Monday. Yeah, I, I okay. might have sent a few emails here and there and whatever, but I, I basically took the whole weekend off. And, and is that still, hard to do? Yeah. Yeah. The fucking like, oh, I felt oh, like yeah. I had bugs crawling up my skin. I'm like, oh, I need it. But, well, you, but you I was did? like, yeah, yeah. But I was like, no, relax. Yeah. Take a breath, chill out. Took Ziggy for a big hike. You know, caught up with tons of people. Had to preoccupy myself. Otherwise, my go-to wouldn't be read, go for a run, do something for myself. My go-to would be open my laptop and start punching out emails, start yeah, trying yeah. to sell shit, you know, yeah. trying to make money. So uh, are, you, are you like that when you go on holidays? Like, it takes three or four days before you can actually go, fucking switch off. Like, it's okay. Yeah, yeah it's not my... Uh, Just let yourself let yourself be. It's relax, all right. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah it's, it's not really my hard. default. I think... It's not my default. I think when I'm on holiday and, like, in the past, I, I, I go on holiday and I'm into it. Okay. I think so. I think, like, what the position I'm in right now is probably just... I know that I'm still in the danger zone. I'm pretty passionate about what I do, so I just need to... You know, make sure that I'm doing what I can to make sure that we survive. Yeah, and we, we're pretty well, we're we're, we're there-ish, you know, now. But so yeah, because I'm not, I work really hard, but I'm not a, I'm not a hard worker. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not born to, to graft. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. born to fucking sit on the couch. Yeah, you know? great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're working hard to make yourself comfortable. Yeah, I'm working hard because I have to. Yeah. Because the yeah. alternative of, of of going back to what I used to do <clears throat> or finding something else is is not what horrifying. I want. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know? So yeah, horrifying is probably the right word. Horrifying is the right word. And, and that's, but I think that's like, <clears throat> that's even scary in itself because I was seeing a psychologist when I went through a rough, rough patch back in the day. And now I see him from time to time just to catch up, just so I think it's healthy and it's, yeah. and it's, it's really good to get pre, um, prehab your mind. Yep. You know what I mean? Get stronger in the mind and know more about yourself. And we talked one day about the fact that, like, so much of my, you know, like, say if you walked away from comedy, for example, like, how much of your persona. And for me as well, like I'm that adventurous guy. You're Adam Rosenbach, the comedian. Like, yeah, how much yeah. of our persona is attached to the thing yeah. that we do? And the thing that we do doesn't always work. You know what I mean? Then, and it, I think it smashes people from time to time because if I walked away from adventure, I'm like, well, who the fuck am I? You know, it's oh mate, probably- I can't even imagine a world where there where I'm not doing stand up because I'd be like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. yeah. And you're right. What what am I without yeah. it? You yeah. know, who am I? Yeah. You guys oh, been fuck. following Jim Carrey? Yeah. This makes you think of it 100. percent Yeah. You know, Jim Carrey used to get so into his characters that he kind of forgot about who Jim Carrey was. Because yeah, if you think okay, about yeah. it, we're completely defined by our characteristics yeah. and our habits. You know, mm. before that is just a thought, you know. Mm. You like you think of something funny, you say, Oh, Adam Rose makes a funny guy. Yeah. You know? So if you start switching your thoughts around, who the fuck are you? Yeah. And yeah. Then, you know, 
depersonalization becomes a very real thing. Yeah, Jim Carrey's it's gone scary. deep on that, hasn't he? It is a bit scary. I, <laughs> oh, totally. I, yeah, I, I watched. Uh, I was watching <clears throat> him when he was talking about that. I got a bit of anxiety. I was like, oh wow, like you know, well, who the fuck am I then? You know. Yeah. But then you know, you just kind of think, well, you know, as long as what you're doing. If you're if it sits with you well and it's your authentic self, you know, and yeah. you could you, what you're saying and doing is the the true you, then that's great, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. I have to be wary with Jim Jim Carrey stuff and, and people like that because I think when I'm when I'm down in the dumps and having a bit of rough time run down or, or like if I'm having like a bit of anxious or whatever, I see through things too much, you know. And I, I go <laughs> like Jim Carrey's talking about like what what. Do you see the red carpet thing with Jim Carrey? No. He was at the. Uh, he was at a, kicked it off, hey. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. at a. Um, he was at a red carpet event, and this lady came up to interview him. She's like, "Oh, Jim Carrey, interesting to see you here at Fashion Week. What are you doing here? Who are you here to see?" And Jim Carrey's like, "Well, I'm just here because this is the most useless place that I can be. The most <laughs> useless part of our culture. Yeah. The most useless part of society." And he started saying, "And she's like, and he goes, and to the point of me being here, I'm not here. He goes, I'm a, I'm an, uh, I'm a." Collaboration of atoms buzzing at a high frequency, none of which are touching. I'm I'm Stardust. I'm, and he started going on this fucking crazy yeah, rant. Yeah, yeah. And it was epic. It was hilarious. It was also like, hey, Jim, calm down, have a laugh. Like, you give yeah, it this, yeah. this poor reporter was like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sure she's loving it. <laughs> oh, good. Jim Carrey's here. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. What are your thoughts yeah, on He'll say something funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, but I, I look at it sometimes and I'm like, oh, fuck, I think a little bit like that. Like, oh, yeah. I think you just have, with all that kind of stuff, I think it's good to think deeply about the world, but then it's really good to also just be a little bit deliberately be ignorant, uh, ignorant and, and and just, you know, go roll the punches and just feel how, how much I mean, as much as uh, sometimes uh, these people are horrifying because they don't think, but you know, people who just um they just nothing bothers them. They don't give a fuck about the yeah, world. Yeah. They don't care like what's dogs. happening. Yeah, or just but there's humans out there. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I just I, I go home, I enjoy my beer on the weekend, I don't think, I go to work. <laughs> No worries. This yeah. is stressless. That's great. I, I, Good used, to, I, couldn't, I used to. Oh, fuck. I would love to live that yeah, life. Yeah, I know. I've just oh, not overthinking just, every have fucking second of my day. Yeah. You have to be dumb. Yeah. I'm not joking when I say that. You do have the, to be dumb. The, 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 the rate of suicide once you get past... I forget what's a good IQ, but like, you know, say 120 is quite smart. You know? Once you get past 120 into the 130s, into the 140s, into the 150s, the higher you go IQ-wise, the rate of suicide... Skyrockets. Follows, follows, skyrockets. Absolutely skyrockets. For that reason. Because yeah. you're like, what's the fucking... Like, what am I... Because you're you, thinking about every moment. Yeah. yeah. And you, you're assessing how ridiculous a lot of the stuff that we do is. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of the things in the world. Whereas if you're Cletus, you know, yeah. it's just like... Or Hal cool. Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you just... Um, you, 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 you just go with the flow. You're yeah. happy with it. You don't question shit. Yeah. And you're, yeah, you're content. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but see I, look, yeah. I, see, I used to think like that, right? And when I had a, a real bad truck... With uh, with mental health issues, yep. I was very very envious of people like that that yep. were just kind of happy going through all this, you know. But at the same time, so I recently got um, diagnosed with ADHD, and yep. I, this is not surprising. Like I was diagnosed um, younger, pretty much, and I, I'd known it my whole life, and I've just been looking into it a little bit more recently and stuff. And um, I, I probably think it's way more prevalent than people who get diagnosed. But anyway, um, I uh, I've been looking into all this stuff a little bit more, and I think that. If you are someone that looks into, you know, everything so much and overanalyzing, it, it's like a superpower that you can use. Yeah. So, like, you would be so much less funny if you weren't like that, you know? Yeah. You couldn't see the stupidity, you know? Yeah, you would be able yeah. to start a business yeah. if you couldn't see what could help people. Think, yeah, you know no, what I mean? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I, I think you're right there. You, we just got to use it. You got to yeah. use it the right way. Yeah. 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 For sure. Like, so, does that mean you're on, do they put you straight on Ritalin, that so kind of stuff? I, they, no. So, I, um, I've... Oh yeah, true. With the, with the camera, I um, never the wanted to be. I mean, I could have been di- <clears throat> um, medicated with OCD, uh, anxiety medication. Yep. Um But I never wanted to. Um, I just, I just never had a, a good feeling about it. But what I do, I, I, so I'm, I'm trying to start my own thing as well. Yep. And um, I've always been a phase person. I was always addicted to. I was. My first thing was uh, Lego as a kid. Then it became <laughs> footy. So was mine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and it was guitar, and I just remember thinking. I just remember thinking back, like every day I'd play guitar for six hours a day. Lego was all day. Yeah. Um, my mum took me uh, to see a hearing specialist because I um, was. She thought I was deaf, um, but I just had acute selective hearing. Um, if I if I got a little bit of boredom at all, I'd start to get very anxious, and I'd always fidget and things like that. Okay. Um, but um, as as I've so the the mental health issues that I had before were the best thing that ever happened to me because I had to unravel everything that I'd fucked up in my life and the way I was living life and yeah. go okay what the fuck like 
I actually need to put some more productive things into place here. Yep. And meditation was a great thing. But actually, just finding things that I'm really passionate about and um, becoming really good friends with people that I was really, really like I aspired to be, but also was just really happy with hanging around with. And yep. my life now is very much always go, go, go as it is for everyone. But the systems in my life now are such that I don't feel like I need medication. You know, Sundays okay. are completely off with my partner. Yep. Um, my business, I'm uh, totally obsessed about. And it, so that, it fuels that boredom. Yep. CrossFit gets rid of the, the energy. Yep. And um, the diet that I've kind of moved to or slowly moving to um, helps with just decreasing the energy as well. So I feel, you know, there are different spectrums for everything, but you know, I think I think there was a big sort of ADHD move, ADHD move in like the early two thousands to the mid two thousands, and I just wonder how many kids that were diagnosed were eating Fruit Loops every morning. Like I just, yeah, I, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like I just yeah. think there are so many things in our life that we're fucking up as a modern society that you can you can actually filter it in the right way. Yeah, you yeah. know, at least for me. Yes. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. I'm not the end of the spectrum. Yeah, but yeah, mm, no, hundred percent. Yeah. So it works really well. I just limit my sugar, try to eat good, healthy food, and yeah. do things that satisfy the person I am. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You tailor it for yourself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone's got different things of other things, you know, whether I was diagnosed with ADHD or not. Like, yeah. this is just the way that I feel like I need to live. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, Rosie, you were talking about um, earlier, you're involved in that AFL. You said that before at the start of the show. Yeah, AFL kind of stuff. What are you doing at the moment? Like, what's what's a week look like for you? Uh, okay, so um, <clears throat> I work for the Front Bar, which is a show on Channel Seven mm, with yep. uh, Mick Malloy and Sam Pang. So that's a footy uh, football show. So I write for that three days a week. I work on the weekly with Charlie Pickering three days a week. Yep. So that's a show on the ABC. It's very news based. So that's why when you said you don't read the news, I was like, fuck that fascinates me because yeah. uh, you know I'm so caught up in this 24 hour news cycle because yeah. I'm always online just seeing it refresh and yeah. the bullshit that flows through there and yeah it skips through most of the world because no one needs to be up that up to date but they need to put content out there yeah. so they're always filling it um, so that's like three days a week on each show over four days so I'm kind of smashed from Monday to Thursday yep. and then comedy festival at the moment and then just do a bit of radio here and there and I've got my um AFL footy podcast, mm, yeah. Junk Time. Yeah, nice. So that's on, uh, record that Sunday Arvos. And then at the moment, trying to write a book as well. So Oh, really? Yeah, oh. a bit going on. Beautiful. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I went overseas with my dad a few years ago. So I'm writing a book about that. Oh, yeah? Right? Yeah, because it was a fucking nightmare. Oh, really? Yeah, because he's... Uh, what's a, cause cause he's insane. Um, <laughs> yeah, mate, I he hate hated, my dad. That's so good. <laughs> he, he's all right. He just hated everything. Like, oh, really? everything. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Paris, mate. He hated Paris. Really? Oh. Why? Just reckon it stunk like cat's piss. Reckon everyone was unfriendly. It's like they weren't. I've heard that before, though. <laughs> they were really <laughs> nice to us. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't it a thing that French people are super obnoxious? Unless you like can speak a bit here and there. Or? Well, that that's kind of the rumor. But um, when he came back, he's like, "Oh, they were rude." I'm like, "Who? Who was rude to us? Like, yeah. well, they were fine." Yeah. And this one guy, we got stuck in a car park uh, trying to get a hire car out, and you know when you got to hit the button to talk to security and stuff. Well, it was all in French, and the guy was behind us, and he came over and he did it all for us and could speak English and helped us out of the car park. And I was like, what about that guy? Couldn't have been more helpful, yeah. you know? Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, I guess that was all right. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so things like that. He was just, he was, because he'd never travelled before. Right. And, yeah, he'd never been outside of Australia. Oh, really? Oh, well, wow. He was born in Germany, but came here when he was two. Gotcha. And, um, yeah, he just, he wasn't prepared for it. Yeah. And yeah. it was not easy. <laughs> that's classic. <laughs> so I'm writing a book about that. Yeah. So, okay, that's classic. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's a non-fiction, obviously. Or? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it should be fun. And I have done a comedy festival show about it. So the show does exist. <laughs> right. I just need to flesh it out a bit more. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's classic. So does your dad know you're writing it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's aware. He's okay. aware. He was he was a part of the last show and... um. And this is like, uh, so the show did really well because it just tapped into, you know, travel and traveling with your parents. People just yeah. came to it. And so the Herald Sun wanted to do a photo shoot with us. And so I was like, Dad, I need you for a photo shoot. He's like, I'm not doing it. I'm like, hey, because he's really reluctant. Yeah. And I'm like, mate, I need it. You know, I need it for publicity. And he goes, well, they can blur my face out. I'm like, you're, n- <laughs> you're not a fucking pedophile, mate. Like, <laughs> we're not blurring your face out. And so we got it to the point where he was holding suitcases in front of him and it blocked out his face. And that's, oh, how, really? that's how he was happy, yeah. He's, really? Oh, he just didn't want to do it. I'm oh, like, wow. I need this. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'll do it, but I don't want my face on. 
<laughs> what a classic. They later found out that he uh, actually was a pedophile. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's, that's the last chapter yeah, of the book. That was like the first book. The book basically blurred out three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck you. chapter of the book. Fuck you, familiar. Better check those suitcases. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's classic. Um yeah, sweet. So yeah, so that's kind of my my life at the moment. So mm. yeah, it's it's uh, it's busy, but it's really enjoyable. Like yeah. I enjoy everything I do. And, yeah, perfect. you know, the, yep. the junk the, the podcast junk time is uh, it's really good fun. Yeah, yeah, just get to well. say shit that you know you don't hear on radio and yeah, yeah. I love my footy. Mm. Yeah, for sure. That I mean, that was something that um, I, you were a little bit quicker to get to that um, to that spot with the podcast. I was I was very happy being my true self yeah. um, straight away. And Bill, I guess. Just the mic freaked him out a little bit, but he was also little very little happy little. to say, speak his mind completely, yeah, straight off the bat. And yeah. I was like, oh fuck, you know, this is my first real sort of intro to uh, a personal brand, really, yeah. you know. But I, I guess it all came crashing down when we did a show about the first time we ejaculated <laughs> about fifty shows in. So <laughs> yeah. that was a good one. Popular, yeah. yeah. No, I, really. I said there was one. I, I said there was one story that I wouldn't tell. And then I told it. Yeah, about you told 80, it. 80 episodes. Ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Involved a lady boy and you know all okay. that kind of stuff. Gotcha. So yeah, um, yeah no, nah, that's great. So that's um, yeah, one one thing I wanted to ask you, Rosie, um, as well. Like all these comedians, obviously, <laughs> he's just done a wee. <laughs> Fucking hell, what a comedy of errors. Yeah, that's classic. Ziggy, for everyone listening at home, Ziggy Sorry, the dog Rosie. has just uh, right. urinated on the green mat here. <laughs> and uh, did piss on me. It's okay. That's, that's the first time I've seen Rosie a little bit uh, complacent. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's looking a little bit. He's edgy. not into it, is yeah. he? No, not, not at all. Into, I'm not into it either. Really, he's a, he's a clean man. Ziggy, mate, you lost your balls yesterday. You do that again. I'll tell you what, your dick's going as well, mate. Yeah, lose the snossage. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, look at that face. He yeah, knows what he's done, he though. He knows exactly what he's done. We've all been there. But um, piss during a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to ask, like, all these comedians that don't have or uh, don't have as much going on as what you have. You have obviously a number of different jobs inside of comedy. Yeah. Like, if you're a stand-up, stand-up. Say you're like a, um, <laughs> say you're this young bloke starting out, or say you you've moved up a little bit and you you know you you got filling some shows at the comedy festival, but like. What does a year look like for a comedian? Do, 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 is it all about festivals? Is it all about touring? Is it just like, right, I do Saturday, Sunday shows in the week and then, like, how does it actually work? Yeah, it's a, it's a really tough one. It's um, because there's people with profile who can make it work year round. Like, say, Dave Hughes or Will Anderson, they could tour the country and, you yeah. know, sell out shows around Australia sort of thing. Yeah. So when you're first starting out, there's just not that uh, opportunity just because – the rooms that there are in Melbourne, you can't do them every week. Yeah. So you can book, get booked there like every four, six weeks, I suppose. So there's just not that much chance to uh, do stand up to a big crowd and earn enough money. Yeah. So it's it's really difficult. Like I, for a lot of stand ups who go, oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna become a full time stand up before I um, uh, or just become a full time stand up and quit my job, and you're kind of like. I don't know why you need to quit your job. Like, yeah, stick it right. out. You can do both for a little while. It's for a bit sure. shit, but I, sure. I'd just keep it there until you get a TV writing job or something <laughs> that can start paying the bills because to yeah. just pay it from stand-up would be almost impossible Yeah, because right. there's just not enough paid rooms. Because, um, you know, if you have uh, – if you've got rent, say it's 200 bucks a week rent – to, to get 200 bucks a week consistently out of comedy and live is just not an easy thing when you're starting out. Those yeah. gigs just aren't there. Yeah, for sure. So there are a lot who just go, yeah, I'm going to become full-time comic. You're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you need to do that. Yeah. You know, you can you can take your time. You can um, do, do a bit of both. That's kind of what I did until I felt comfortable and, you know, and also there's not a, a shitload of TV writing gigs out there either. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. But that's the same... I don't know that. I mean, that just sounds very impulsive to me in anything in life. Like just to throw all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Even people that would just like throw all their savings into capital for a new business or something. It's like just relax a bit, you know. Like, yes. Just see, but even even just see if it's actually something that you really want to do. Yeah. You know, like you may not want to be a comedian when you find out that you know what you have to do. Yeah. Put all your eggs in that basket. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the one thing it may do for people is uh, once you're committed to it and you realise I need to. Uh, work harder because this is it. Yeah, uh, I've got no other income, and so you might you may push a little bit harder, but there's no opportunity. Like the comedy festival is a chance to make money because you know uh, people coming to your show, and yeah. you're going to get people coming to see you specifically. But outside of that, there's no real opportunity to make a shitload of cash, no. No. unless you're really well known. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. And then, it, then it's cash cow. So what is 
what is the life of... So I know you've got your other jobs, but if someone is out there maybe listening to the show yeah. and wants to be a full-time comedian, yep. what what does that actually entail? Because Bill says it all the time that, you know, oh, he gets to travel the world, but his job is sending emails. So, yeah, so yeah. what's a full-time comedian's life actually like? Yeah, well, so for me, it's uh, a lot of time spent at home, a lot of time just, um, you know, reading up on the news and stuff. And depending on the show you're working on, like uh, the front bar... The contact hours are pretty small. I do a lot of stuff from home just because there's no point in sitting in an office. Things happen Mm. sporadically and in bits and spurts. So you'll go in for a Thursday show. We'll have a production meeting on a Tuesday for an hour and a bit. And then Wednesday, it's all. Uh, that's when I write by myself at home. Right. And then Thursday, about five o'clock, we go in for rehearsal and for the show. Okay. So you don't spend a lot of time in there. Whereas the weekly with Charlie Pickering, I'm in at the ABC in the offices because you've got to be around other people and you're looking at vision and you're talking to people and you need a lot of feedback in meetings and to run through scripts. Yep. So that's kind of full, more full time and more full on. Right. Than the other show, but. Both get the same end result. They just uh, are done in different styles. Yeah, for sure. And it's same like if you were writing for a sketch show, mostly you would do that from home. Okay. Yeah. And so so Wednesdays are your writing day. So, I mean, how do you, do you just sit down and go, okay, like how do you start going through a joke here and there? And, um, so know. because it's footy-based, you've already got the topics. Yeah. And then they'll give you a rundown of what's going to be in the show. So you kind of start typing that out and you go, all right, the topic is like, uh, you know, um, a game in Shanghai. So then you'll just start writing jokes about that. So they, they, they'll give you the topics and then you just start writing to that. Yeah. Stand-up's a little bit harder to write for because um, – it's a blank slate. You know, yeah. you just got a, a white piece of paper there that you can just write whatever you want. So that can be a bit more difficult because you're like, fuck, where do I start? Yeah, yeah. And so that's why I'm always, anything that happens, always jot down ideas so you can write it down and then work on it at a later later date. Yeah. And I guess, I guess, I, I feel like, I don't know. I mean, is self deprecation an easy thing to fall back to? Like, is it something that you, I mean, you can always, if you can look at yourself objectively and go, I, I suck here. You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, you've got to know your you've got to know your weaknesses because yeah. if you don't, then you're fucking deluded. Yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah, and, yeah, and also, um, you just can't uh, like for any of us. You just can't believe you you're um, infallible. No, for sure. You know that you've got no weaknesses because everyone does. And yeah. if you can make fun of them and know them, then it's just a lot easier to be able to pick up where um, you know the bits that you probably need to work on. Yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, I think you can overdo self-deprecation. Like the audience are for like, sure. all right, we're here for a reason. We like you. Yeah. So just fucking back off on that. Well, I mean, that's the thing because like, it's like, it's like we get it, you're fat, you know? Yeah. Like, you, yeah, it, it becomes tiresome. That's if right. If you keep yeah. going there. I just feel like, is there, is there maybe like a stereotype with uh, people that are overweight, like always laughing about the fact that they're overweight? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're saying. And it's like they, they say it because they're comfortable with it, but then it almost gets to that tipping point. You're like, are you comfortable Shit, with it? Or are you just saying, yeah, and you're making us uncomfortable about yeah. it. Yeah. You That's fat right. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. just, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing because everyone wants to do self-deprecation to show I'm comfortable with it, but then it goes to the point where you're like, well, you're protesting too much now. Exactly. You're making, yeah. me, you're making me feel weird. Yeah, for, oh, 100%. I feel, I feel like a, uh, a good sort of, you know, half and half of that is like, you make fun of yourself, you know, you admit that you you screwing here but then that failure you can also relate that to a thing that we all do as human beings yeah yeah you know? and, and that's what people like yeah when you do something or you talk about something that everyone does and they're like yeah we love that yeah people love getting on. shit pointed out like that 100% <laughs> so they can nudge their friend next to them oh I do that you yeah know, they love it you're a cockhead you yeah yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. 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 <laughs> I love this guy yeah. Yeah. he's up a dick <laughs> for sure yeah, yeah. that's great hey um Tom, you reckon we should do six from six with Rosie? I don't know if we did it last time. We would have, but we'll the questions, questions would have been different. We'll change two questions. Oh, uh, yeah. I reckon we, we give it a crack. You, gotta go, you want to go six yeah, from six? I reckon. Yeah, I reckon. Let's do so, it. Do you remember name? six from six last time? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you remember us? <laughs> vaguely, vaguely. <laughs> when was it? It was like two years ago, wasn't it? Uh, and I just come back from Afghanistan? A year and a half did ago, you? I reckon. Mm. Were you in Afghanistan? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't remember it now? No, oh. I literally don't. Where are you in Afghanistan? <laughs> yeah, for uh, for the for the gigs for the troops. Oh yes, I do troops. remember that. Yeah, so yes. my, last year I went to uh, Baghdad. Oh yes, in Iraq. How oh, was that? Shit. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. Got to yeah. shoot AK forty sevens because they were training up the uh, at that stage. They were training up the Iraqi army to take back Mosul from wow. ISIS. Oh yeah, and so they were training up all the Iraqi army dudes. Oh, and yeah. so that was really really fascinating. Jeez, that'd give you some perspective, surely. Oh yeah, seeing those dudes on the base, and because um, 
because uh, there was a tendency, particularly in Afghanistan, when they'd be training up the, the local troops, they'd go a bit rogue and yep. they'd end up turning on the troops. Yep. So they'd let them shoot on the range, then take the weapons off them and wouldn't let them just sit around with weapons. Yeah. They were just like, you're too volatile. Yeah. Wow. But they were telling us the one thing that the Iraqi troops do, uh, if they can't train out of them. So they train them how to fight, you know, how to take back the city. But they have a thing called uh, insular, which is God willing. Yep. So if God wills it, it will happen, right? And so they go, these guys will just fucking run from behind a wall and just start shooting, right? Just stand in an open street. And they're like, if God wills it, I'll live. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but if you didn't, be a dickhead yeah. and bolt out from behind yeah. that fucking wall. Yeah. God would will it; you'd still be alive. Yeah. <laughs> and so they have so much faith in you know yeah. just no. Nah, if God if God wants it, I will live. Oh. And that's why they said you can't train that out of them. And I think that's why uh, them becoming uh, like suicide bombers and stuff. You get into their headspace of how that works for them. It's like God wills it totally. So yep. if I get blown to bits, that's what God wanted. Oh. And so it's a really hard thing. So they're trying to teach them tactics, but. They go. They they'll do random shit like that. Yeah, and I you remember just go, that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, like, you know that goes against everything we're trying to teach. We've yeah. been taught, and you guys are insane. Well, I remember That's that in so Jocko Willing's crazy. book. Um, he talks about you know how the U.S. Navy SEALs were trying to train you know um, the Iraqi forces to yeah. take back their own city. You know, and there was a huge protest amongst them. This was in the mid two thousands. Yeah, and. Um, Huge protest against him. He's like, hey, look, you know, if, if we don't train them to take back their own city, we're going to be stuck here for the rest of our lives. Yeah, so yeah. So mission incomplete. You yes. Know? So it's like- Are they going to have a skin in the fight? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Like, we'll be able to do it because we're way better than any sort of rogue little you yeah, know, ISIS yeah. thing here and there. But we can't. We've got we've got other shit to do. You yeah. Know? And, you but, yeah, you need them to take back their own stuff. You have to. Yeah. yeah. But, and that also, like, taking back their own city or their own space just gives them a profound sense of patriotism, you know, yes. that they want that that area as well you know yeah they want to keep it they want to maintain yeah. the, the piece that they yeah. fought so hard to to get yeah yeah exactly you know? and take back your own city kind yeah. of thing yeah, yeah. but yeah. we got to shoot I got to shoot AK-47 so that was, was pretty exciting that just go nuts <laughs> is it hard uh, it wasn't too hard. So we're on the range. You're lying down, and we had the uh, bulletproof vest on as well. So you didn't really get the sense of the kickback. But right yeah, on. it was it was just fun to hold the, the yeah. you know your, your, your weapon of choice from a terrorist. Yeah, I've never, exactly. Never pretty shot great. A gun, eh? Yeah, I've never, never shot a gun. Never no. shot a gun. I've Haven't been... you? No, I've never shot a gun. No. Oh right. Yeah, yeah I, no, I suppose neither. I hadn't. Um, but uh, the last time I went before Afghanistan, we went on the range with the SAS. Did you really? So they Gosh. had all their weapons lined up, and we just moved from one to the next. Yeah, and that was so sick. Fucking the SAS. next level, man. Mate, that was great. They're next level, mate. <laughs> oh yeah, they're the big dogs. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They really are. <laughs> one of yeah. our uh, mutual friends. Um, we're trying to get him on the show, and I've, I've wanted to get on the show for ages. But he was in the SAS for seven years. Yeah, but obviously, like. I can understand the reluctancy to get on the show because they're just so high up. But I just imagine like what they would... I like how... There's not a lot he can talk about. Well, no, nah, exactly. But one thing I do notice about him is that um, him and a mate of his that uh, his mate, he's a pretty high up in the police force as well. They always stand with their with uh, their back to a wall yeah. so they can just see the area. Yeah, just yeah. notice little behavioural traits. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Always surveying the scene. There you go. Yeah. That's fascinating, insane, isn't it? Yeah. They're always mm. good in your... Get you in a choker hold. Yeah. <laughs> just control the situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mate, I'm just having a beer. <laughs> yeah. You could go rogue. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. God willing. Really. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bit rough. <laughs> really classy. Yeah. Um, I've, I wanted you to... Um, I tried to tell your... your. Remember that, that joke you told me? The, um, oh, yeah. You know the one? Do you reckon you can tell it on the air? Oh, yeah. I need to tell Rosie. It's a politically incorrect joke. Yeah, but, but it's not my cause, joke. Because I, I, t- I know it's not your joke, but like the one that... Because I, I don't know... Any, and I know this is very like, oh, Rosie, tell us a joke. Like, yeah, yeah. It's not what... But but I know one joke, right? Because I went to the um, went to the comedy festival with George the other day. We were having dinner. She's like, you know any jokes? I'm like, yeah, I know one. And it was in a restaurant. And I delivered the punchline like I whispered. It doesn't work yeah. like that. It just doesn't. You know the no, joke. You got to say tell it. Tell right. Rosie the joke. I want to see. Okay. I want to see. It's uh, it's Fuck. real. It's really dodged. But tell that <laughs> in- intro. Story. Tell the remember the intro. Oh, the actual story. Yeah. T- no, no. But oh, I'll let you tell. Okay. You tell well, so so one of my mates, his dad was on one of the planes um, for in nine eleven. Yep. So for United ninety three. I can't remember which one that was. Oh, no. No, it was would have been the other ones that went into one of the towers. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, called him up on the way, um, you know, on the way before it was going into the tower. And um, it really fucked my mate around because, you know, the last words that my dad actually said, that his dad actually said to him was, Hello, Akbar! <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Funny. That's great. It's great, eh? Yeah. Shocking joke. But it's just, you know, the first time I ever heard it, I was just shocked. Like, That's great. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. Oh. It was like, thanks, Dad. 
<laughs> I love that joke. Yeah, um, it's, it's a good one. It's right. very good. <laughs> so, Rosie, um, let's do six from six. We'll, we'll get you out of here. Um, so, I, we definitely did this last time, but we like I said, we've changed the question. So, yeah, sweet. anyway, we'll see, we'll see. You might notice a couple of them. Um, so, my first question is, um, favourite travel destination that you've been that you just absolutely love? Uh, yeah, okay. So, I would have uh, been to a few more places since I was last on. But uh, phew, there's a couple there. I loved Barcelona. Yeah. I thought Barca was great. But uh, I went to Tokyo. And fucking, if that's not the oh. best town in the world, <laughs> I absolutely adored it. And I love Japan. Like, Kyoto was right up there as well. Yeah. Uh, and Osaka was fantastic. But Tokyo, so <laughs> much fun. Yeah. So much fun. It's like it's designed by a four-year-old. That's exactly like, what I say about the city. It's like, I say it's like it's designed by children. Yeah, I was so about to say that. What do you want? They're like, I want loud noises. Yeah. I want uh, toys and yeah. I want lights. I want gone, that, you've got it. I want that 40-foot building to be two two cartoon characters yeah. with large swords and a female with breasts this big. Yeah. I, want them, I want them to be painted on that 40-foot 40, really? 40 building. How amazing is building. it? Yeah, it's the best. The food is great. The yeah. drink, the culture is fantastic. They're so polite. It's so clean. Yeah. It's so safe. Wow. It's ridiculous. And it is... Next level, like so many little neighborhoods so and weird. stuff, and the really? food. So weird, food's dude. amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, I really loved it. It's, it's just great. Co- it's kooky, man. Like we yeah. went to the 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 robot restaurant. Do you go to the robot oh, restaurant? Fuck yeah, <laughs> is it great, <laughs> mate? It's what you imagine a robot restaurant really? would be. Yeah, it's a restaurant where you- we're, we're, we're we're basically. It's a shitter show. <laughs> yeah. It's really shit. It's almost like it's like a. It's so shit. It's, it's good. It's like their version of like Dracula's or. Um, you know, witches in bridges sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's it's high tech and they come out playing drums and there's <laughs> robots and shit and lasers. And then after about 10 minutes, they have a fucking break. And you're like, what are you having a break for? Yeah. Like, it's just started. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 And the whole Good. joint is set up. It looks like uh, we went to the bathroom there. It's like uh, this gold toilet. It looked like Saddam Hussein's bathroom. Like, it was just <laughs> full on. Yeah, you walk, you walk through the joint to get in there and it's like you walk through rooms that are just like a thousand small little mirrors on the walls and you're like, what? Fuck, and then they're like, there's a robot band in this f- yeah. crazy, colourful foyer. It's like you're walking through, it's like you're on acid, actually. Yeah. When you're walking yeah. through there, it's like you're just like, what the fuck yeah. is and going like, on here? Like Tron, if you've seen <laughs> oh, that. Oh, yeah. Tron. Tron's great. It's like that. Yeah. It's That's fucking nuts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's real fun, weird you said Tron. I, I had a genuine hallucination experience on um, shrooms and I was felt like I was going, going down the grid. Oh, really? Yeah, really great. hectic. Really weird. It was, it was a negative experience. <laughs> but, uh, really great. Yeah, I nearly died. Yeah. Did really you play Pachinko it. when you were over there? You nah. know that game they play? Nah. So there's this, there's this game... Um, and you stumble across it. It's almost like it, it, they look like uh, pokies, like where people play pokies, right? So you go in and it's the loudest fucking thing you've ever heard. It's just ding, 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 bells and all this sort of <laughs> shit. And what people do is they get um, a basket full of uh, ball bearings, probably like a, maybe a centimetre across or so, um, and they pour it into the machine. And so they go down the machine and you've got to uh, move like little paddles and stuff and you get the, you guide the balls and they go into a slot, yeah. right? But... You don't win any money. Or you don't win anything. <laughs> yeah. You just get more balls to come through. Really? And people play it en masse and they pour thousands of balls in and it's the loudest fucking thing you've ever heard <laughs> and it's packed and it's run by like the mafia and stuff. Like it, it's a money spinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's yeah, like they're pokies. Jeez, that's strange. It's called Pachinko. It's Pachinko. fucking it's insane. Yeah. So where's the dopamine kick from that? Oh, I, just, oh, well, I couldn't work out how to play it. We yeah, went in there and we're just like spinning buttons and shit. <laughs> yeah, and it was just really loud, yeah. yeah. And the guy's like, oh, you got to try and get it into that bit. And we're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. yeah. But people, like it's packed 24-7. That's people insane. People always playing it. Isn't that insane? Yeah. That scares me a little bit. Where like, that's the technology revolution area and people are playing with balls all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know? it's like, a, so I'm, I'm intrigued. Maybe you can win money, but I didn't see anyone winning anything. They just <laughs> won more balls to pull back into the machine. And you buy a basket for like, a, you know, 100 yen or whatever. Really? And you get a big basket and pour it in. 100 yen's not cheap, eh? Hey? Oh, I reckon, no, that's probably about guessing that, mate. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got yeah, absolutely no idea. That's yeah, about 10 bucks. Offer, mate? That's oh, about it's 10 bucks. It's about 10 oh, bucks right. or so, isn't it? Like, yeah, I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. I, that's why I, t- I questioned Tommy, because yeah. I can't remember the exchange rate at all. And Tommy was just like, you know, there's exchange rates that are like a thousand. <laughs> yeah, it could be yeah. a thousand, it could be a dollar. Mate, I've been a millionaire in Laos. Yeah, true, yeah. Closest place I've been is Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. No, Japan's hilarious. My brother just got back from there, actually. Yeah. Um. I'd recommend it highly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second question is dream destination, somewhere you haven't been top of the bucket list. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Because um, I have been kind of thinking about where I'd like to go next. I reckon um, yeah, probably Mexico would be the next yeah, place that I'm heading to. It's good fun. Oh, yeah. 
So Fantastic. I really want to do that sort of Mexico City and South, like Oaxaca and all yep. that yeah, kind of yeah. area. So Porto Escondido is really good. Yeah, that, I'm really looking forward times. to that. Porto's, Porto's. And maybe Juarez, you know, see, see a couple of gun battles. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, get yeah. yeah we shot at that Get a couple of bricks. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know how to handle yourself. Yeah, exactly. A couple of bricks of coke. <laughs> yeah, a bit great. Bricks of coke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah be fine. Be yeah. fine, yeah. yeah. I'll be um, back in Australia. I'll blend right in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. You look the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very Mexican. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with a name like Rosebank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they're my people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. So, Adam um, Barito. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and my last question is: Any books that you recommend to people can be any sort of uh, any sort of read. Well, um, we're talking before we uh, started on this uh, the the power of habit, which I, I've really enjoyed. I thought it was just a great book, and mm. it was just talking about you know uh, habits and the way they f- they can help our lives and the way y- you can. Um, restructure your own to make it you know into a positive and help yourself out on a daily basis it was just a really fascinating read and how people apply them particularly to sporting teams i've really enjoyed the way that uh they kind of explain that in the book so yeah it's called the power of habit i really enjoyed it yes we haven't read that one good one really yeah one nice one just a, there's a little bit at the end of that which is great and there's um there was this example of someone that used the power of habit um, that understanding of it to change. And so he figured out, so they always talk about um, the habit and then the reward. And you can change the reward, but you can't change the habit. So if your habit, from from memory, so this bloke at 3 p.m. every day at work, he'd always get himself a donut. And if you you know take a bit of time to realize what that is, the habit, or I guess the, the trigger, or maybe it's trigger is a better word, the trigger is boredom, you know, and he wants a break. So Instead of changing the, so he changed the reward from eating a donut to going talking with his mate, and just that little change, he lost five, ten kilos over mm. six months or something because yeah. you can change the reward. It's a great little book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's and good. little tricks like that. Yeah. The the fascinating one was um was it the guy with Alzheimer's who couldn't remember, he couldn't remember basically anything in the house, but he always remembered the house because of habit. And like, uh, even though he couldn't remember that, that his habit that was so ingrained, like he, he would go for a walk every day, and when he came back, he wouldn't know anyone that's in the house. He wouldn't know where shit was in the house, but he knew the house. Yeah, mm. it was a really fascinating read. Yeah, yeah. And you can understand why it happens. Like a survival, we can only process one kill at a time. Like yeah. if we were thinking about putting the accelerator down and then yeah, changing right. the gear the Driving's whole time, a perfect example. You'd be fucked. Yeah, like you, you could drive home with your eyes closed. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Like you don't. You can, oh, we all do. Yeah, yeah. we all do. Well, one, yeah. one eye closed while you're drinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot your gun. Sports, watch your <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch this, fellas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're up, Tommy. Okay. Um, uh, so, what do you like to do when you have some spare time? Get a bit of downtime in you. Yeah, that's a really good question because I don't get a lot of it, and I, I find that really hard to. Uh, in the lead up to the festival, I won't allow myself time for that. Like if I go to the movies or something like that, I'm like, you should be writing. You know, I get yep. really wow. strong on myself. So just to be able to sit down and uh, watch a movie or go to the movies or something like that, just to be able to switch off for two or three hours is massive for me and just to not think about comedy and what's coming up next and, yeah. you know, what aren't I, what am I not doing in this moment? I find that really hard. So, like, I, I love going and exercising and stuff because that's one time where I can switch off for an hour <laughs> and just not – it's like my meditation, as I'm yeah. sure it is for you blokes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if I could do anything, it would just be like to sit in a park and read mm. and just switch off and mm. not think about, you know, should be doing something. Why aren't you doing this? Send an email. Yeah. What's happening here? So that that is like the ultimate pleasure, which I don't, I don't get to do enough. Yeah. Yeah. But I know, sure. I know that I'm relaxed if I'm reading. Yeah. Because that means that, yeah, I'm comfortable and I've given myself a break. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about someone you look up to? Um, Who's your favorite comedian? Of all time. Anyone? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a couple. There's one guy called um, Norm MacDonald. I know Norm MacDonald, yeah. Yeah, who's like a yeah. Canadian I've who was on him. Saturday Night Live. And okay. uh, yeah, I like fucking love him and love his stuff. His book was a bit shit and it was really disappointing actually. But right. um, yeah, I just I really, really enjoy his style. Yeah, he's very one, dark. Um, and he's on a sitcom. Uh, he was on one sitcom at some point, wasn't he, that we all knew? And Yeah. Uh, I can't remember uh, which one it was. Was it not Saturday Night Live? Or was it a no, no, it was a sitcom. It was on a sitcom. I know from a sitcom. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I know who Norm Macdonald was there. Yeah, yeah. was yeah. he on the Drew Carey show? A yeah, bit maybe. Yeah, I think he was on the Drew Carey show. Yeah, but he's I very think. funny. He's yeah, very right. funny. Yeah. I really like him. You can um, see he's on. Um, he's in that um Jerry Seinfeld um Netflix. 
in, ca- in comedians with, uh, riding in cars. With uh, I watched one. Oh, right, with, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, it's really. Not Jim Carrey with uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. He's very yep. funny. Mm, yeah, he's to good. watch that. Yeah. He's good. Uh, and finally, uh, if you could uh, have a dinner, a sit down dinner. Oh, yeah. Three people you'd invite. Uh, who would you get down? Who would I get down? Um, I'd love to get uh, Vladimir Putin. I'd love to know what's going on. Like oh, he's Vlad. got he's got a plan for world domination <laughs> for sure. And just to just to get a uh, bit of a heads up, just to know where I should be in, <laughs> yeah. in a certain point in life. Um, He'd be a clap. Just quickly, do you know estimate how much he's worth? His net worth. Uh, oh, he's he's definitely a billionaire, be. isn't he? Yep. Have yeah, yeah. But because he he's got all that. He tapped into all the oil and stuff like with all the oligarchs. Yep. Without uh, looking at this, just let 30? me. Thirty. Thirty bill. Two hundred billion dollars. <laughs> How fucked is that? <laughs> I would not have thought of that. Is that that would put him nearly top of the pops worldwide? Nearly. Yeah, he's, uh, he's running pretty hard. Yeah, That's Jeff Bezos. Bezos is. I reckon Jeff Bezos would be the first trillionaire, yeah. or Elon Musk, because yeah. their companies are growing so so yeah. fast. Depending on how Tesla and SpaceX go, but but I think Bezos is only like three hundred. Billions, four hundred yeah. billion. He's not much, is he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else? So that's, Stephen that's, King. That's I'd love to, Stephen King. Love to sit down with Stephen King because yeah. he's just. Uh, yeah, I haven't read one of his books in a long time. But um, have you seen it? I haven't. Is oh, it good? It's yeah, it's good. So good. Yeah, it's yeah. Fucking good. so. Good. I need to reread yeah. the book because I read that when I was younger, oh, nice. and I remember loving it. But yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'd oh, be mate. fascinating chatting to him. Oh, it would be. Yeah, I just watched 1922, which is on Netflix. It's one of his books. Okay, uh, really great too. Yeah, like he's he's just his mind is warped. Did he man. write? Um, did he write? Am I tripping out? Did he write Green Mile and Shawshank as well? Are they, yes. Are they Stephen King? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Short. He wrote Shawshank. Yeah. Yeah. So the, Shawshank, I think he wrote, and I could be wrong here, but there was a, a book of four. It was only, it was only a short story, but it was written as I think Richard Bachman. He wrote these books under a pseudonym for gotcha. I don't know why. Maybe take the pressure off him. And I think that may have been in that one. He also wrote Running Man. The, really? Which is really? The, um, Arnie. Yeah, the Arnie. I used to love that movie. That was yeah. my favourite Arnie movie. And it wow. was a, it was a yeah. really good... Um, it was a re- again, it was a short story. Yep. Yeah, and it was great. <laughs> well, that's that's incredible, isn't it? Mm. No, Someone the books that just he's pumped talent. out are oh. just phenomenal. Yes. Like, it I always is thought he was a ho- fucking next level. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I always thought he was just a horror writer. That's why yeah. I never, I've never really um, read most of his stuff. But the further you, you, you go into it, like all those things, all those um, stories that we just mentioned... There's only one of them that's not even really horror, which is it, you know? Yeah. Like Green Mile and Shawshank Redemption, no. Running Man, like they're just epic stories. Yeah. There's a great one called, uh, <coughs> again, I think it's a short story, uh, Secret Window, Secret Garden. Which Secret we, Garden, the movie? Well, Johnny Depp Secret was window. Secret in, window. in the movie. Secret Window. Yeah. Oh. The, the movie wasn't as good, Secret but the book is... Um, yes. Wind in my hair and the sand yeah. at my feet. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound very Stephen <laughs> King. No, no, that was very flat too. <laughs> Secret, yeah. uh, I've seen that one, Secret Window. That was a good little thriller, but it wasn't an amazing movie. I imagine the book would be a little better. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, last one, mate. Two oh, blokes there. Trying to think of the gender roles there. I'm trying to think who else. Oh, no, no. I'll, yeah. uh, uh, Dave Grohl. Oh, Dave Grohl. Love to sit down with Dave Grohl. Yeah. He's just uh, like I've, I have met him. I met him at Triple M Did once when really? I was working there. Yeah, and he was oh, awesome. And he's just a fun bloke, and mm. just be great to sit down and mm. chat music with him. Yeah, I'd love so would that. you want? Would you want '90s Dave Grohl or modern day Dave Grohl? No, I reckon modern day. He's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I went and saw the Foo Fighters. Uh, they were out in Melbourne about three months ago now. Okay, and uh, yeah, they're fucking amazing. Yeah. A just good, fun rock band, and yep. you know, I think the bands that I see are usually playing in pubs, so it's just good to see some good stadium rock. Mm, yeah, it was yeah. great mm, for sure. Great. Well, ads, uh, give us a comedy festival plug. Oh, yeah. So, uh, my show is called Hold My Beer. I've got a couple more to go. Uh, tickets at comedyfestival.com.au. So, by the time this comes out, it will be Friday 13th and Saturday 14th, 8 yep. 15 p.m. at the European Beer Cafe. Perfect. Love it. Beautiful. Anywhere else people can find you, mate? Anything mm. else? Uh, uh, you can go to my website, rosie.com.au, or else uh, check out my podcast, Junk Time AFL, if you're into your footy. Great. Cool. Rosie's with a Z? It is, yes. Perfect. Rosie with a Z.com. All righty. Well, mate, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me again.